Hi, in my last video, I tested a 2 to 18 GHz directional coupler with a 10 dB coupling from Warbo Microwave. And in this video, let's take a look at another component they sent in, a two-way 500 MHz to 26.5 GHz wideband Wilkinson power divider and combiner. And thank you, Warbo Microwave, for sending this in. For those who don't know already, Warbo Microwave is a US-based company. They're in New Jersey, not too far from where I live, just a couple of hours driving distance away. Their quality products are locally manufactured and include splitters, couplers, hybrids, and other custom microwave components from DC all the way up to 26.5 GHz. If you are interested in any of these products, you can check out their website following the link in the video description below. So with an upper frequency range of 26.5 GHz, this power divider here is actually one of the highest frequency products offered by Verbo Microwave. The exact price is not disclosed on their website, but high frequency, high bandwidth microwave components like this one are generally very expensive. If you have to ask, you probably can't afford it. Similar products from other reputable manufacturers are selling for around $1,000 each. Of course, this is that if you are buying the product brand new. If you have been following my channel, you probably saw my review of a four-way Wilkinson divider from Verbal Microwave a while back, and I also did a teardown of that device. I will leave a link in the video description below if you wanted to check out that video and take a peek at the inner workings of a Wilkinson power divider. Anyway, as I have covered in my other video, the simplest power dividers are resistive dividers. One main advantage of resistive dividers is that they can operate over a very wide frequency range, from DC up to tens of gigahertz, and they can be made very small in size. The main drawback of a resistive divider is its insertion loss. For a 1 to 2 resistive divider, the insertion loss is 6 dB. 3 dB of that is lost as heat in the internal resistors. Because of the resistive loss, it also limits the power that can go into the power divider. Another issue of a resistive divider is its poor isolation between the ports. Just like the insertion loss, the isolation between any two ports is also 6 dB, given the resistive nature. Wilkinson dividers, on the other hand, are constructed with quarter-wave transmission lines, so there is little resistive loss. In the real situation, each of the output ports has exactly half of the input power, which is 3 dB below the input power level. That's why the insertion loss of a two-way Wilkinson divider is typically specified as insertion loss above 3 dB, as that would be the actual loss. And because there's no resistive loss, Wilkinson dividers can handle much higher input power. Besides the benefit of low insertion loss, another key advantage of Wilkinson divider is its high isolation between the output ports. This isolation is typically above 20 dB. For this device I have here, the insertion loss goes up fairly linearly as frequency increases. And you can see, even at the highest specified frequency of 26.5 GHz, the loss is at just under 4.5 decibels, well below the nominal 6 decibels loss of a two-way resistive divider. Another important spec is the phase imbalance. Ideally, the signals coming out from the output ports of the splitter should be in phase, meaning the phase difference between the two signals should be zero. So in real world, the lower the phase imbalance, the closer to zero degree, the better. If you look at the spec, you will see that the phase imbalance increases somewhat with frequency, but the maximum phase imbalance is only six degrees. By looking at the figure here though, I'm actually not sure why it is in decibel, as the phase balance is usually measured in degrees. Anyway, if you are using the device as a power combiner, the phase on balance will affect your combined power output. As in the combiner scenario, you would have two phase locked signals inputting from this side, and the combined signal is outputted from the other port. Any phase mismatch would reduce the theoretical maximum output power. And here is the isolation between the two output ports. As you can see, the number is largely between 20 decibels and 30 decibels, which is significantly better than the nominal 6 dB figure for a resistive divider. Here is a return loss plot from the input port and one of the output ports. Later on, we'll do some experiments and measure that ourselves. And here are a couple of figures showing the repeatability in the manufacturing process. The insertion loss and isolation are measured across different units, and you can get a rough idea of the variation in specs. In the worst case scenario, you can see the insertion loss only varies by roughly 0.5 decibels towards the very upper frequency limit. Now let's do some measurements using a light VNA to get a sense of the performance data we saw earlier under 6.3 GHz, which is the highest frequency the light VNA can go. 
And here's the setup. By the way, the light VNA had already been calibrated prior to the setup here. Anyway, you can see the S11 port is connected to the input port of the divider, and the output port goes to the S21 port for measurement. And let me zoom in here. So right now we're seeing the S21 measurement on the screen here. You can see the S21 here, the reading is just below minus 4 dB, and that's largely in line with what we see in the spec sheet. Of course, the behavior gets a little bit weird towards the higher end, and that's because of the limitation of this light VNA here, not because of the directional coupler. And you can see even the specified frequency starts at 500 megahertz. We can go well below 500 megahertz. In fact, we start around zero here. And even after 50 megahertz, you can see the S21 is pretty much in line with the specification. Now we're looking at the port isolation between the two output ports. You can see the input port has been terminated. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit and we'll get a closer look. And because the operating frequency of this device starts at 500 megahertz, you can see that below that frequency range, the isolation is actually not that good. So right now, for example, we're at around 63 megahertz and the isolation is only five decibels. So let's actually increase the frequency and see at the starting of the 500 megahertz. So you can see that at around 500 megahertz, the isolation is already at 20 decibels. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, the isolation of this device throughout the frequency range is between minus 20 and minus 30, roughly. And remember earlier when we were showing the specs, there were a couple of figures showing you the return loss. And this is how it is measured. Right now we're showing the S11, which is the return loss. For example, right now we're looking at into the input port, what the return loss is. And for that, I have terminated both of the output ports. And you can see here, this is the return loss looking into the input port. And let's uh, sweep through it a little bit. You can see, get a rough idea, is roughly 15 decibels down. And similarly, this is a return loss looking into one of the output ports with the other ports terminated. And let's take a closer look here. You can see that for the majority of the time, again, the return loss is under 20 decibels. To get an idea of how this Wilkinson divider works at higher frequencies, I have changed the setup a little bit as I don't have a VNA that can go higher than 6.3 gigahertz. Now here's the setup. I use my HP8620C sweeping generator as a CW signal source. Now you can see that's a signal generator up there and currently it's outputting a roughly 12 gigahertz signal as it is closer to the upper frequency limit of the 8620C. If you follow the call act, you will see that the output from the 8620C goes into this directional coupler here. And the output from the directional coupler, you can see, is routed to this detector, which is hooked up to the WaveTac 1045 microwave power meter. And right now it's measuring the output at roughly zero dBm. And through the coupling port, I also hooked up a microwave frequency counter back there that is 5350B, and you can see the current frequency measured is at 12 gigahertz roughly. All right, so now we're ready to measure the characteristics of this divider at a frequency of 12 gigahertz. And let's take a look here. So right now I had a through connecting these two coax. So I'm going to replace that with my microwave divider here. So remember, we're trying to measure the insertion loss here. So I'm measuring between the input port and one of the output ports. The other output port is terminated. And now you can see here, we're reading roughly minus 3.8. And that means the output signal is roughly 3.8 decibels down from the input signal. And this number is largely in line with what we have in the specifications. Next, let's take a look at the port isolation at 12 gigahertz here. So I'm going to swap the measurement around. I will terminate the input port here. I'll put the 
input into port 2, it doesn't really matter. I can do either port 1 or port 2, since port 1 is already hooked up to the detector here. Okay, so now I have hooked up. And you can see the isolation measured on the power meter here. And that's at roughly minus 15 dBm. With the input power being 0 dBm, that means we have an isolation of roughly 15 dB. So if you don't have a VNA, this is how you would characterize the device. And now let's take a look at using this splitter as a combiner. In my previous video, when we tested the 2 to 18 GHz directional coupler, I mentioned that you could use a directional coupler to combine two signals, given a good isolation between the coupling port and output port. And of course, you can also use a Wilkinson divider to do the same thing, and combine both test signals together. Because of the good isolation between the output ports, of course, you can also use a Wilkinson divider to do the same thing, combining both of the test signals. As we have demonstrated, the isolation between the two output ports is also very good. In this setup, we have a signal coming in from the sweeping generator AD620C, which goes into port number 2 here, through this directional coupler. And on the other side, which I will show you in just a little bit, is coming in from my WaveTech 907. Both signals are at roughly around 11 GHz, so let me show you the setup. Here is the same 8620, as you can see, it goes through that direction copper, goes into port number two of the divider. And on this side, you can see the WaveTech 907 out there, outputting a 11 GHz signal, and that signal goes into the port one of the divider here. And obviously, in this case, the divider is used as a power combiner. The output goes to the spectral analyzer, which I'll show you. Right now, we're seeing two signals on the spectral analyzer. And as you can see, the spectral analyzer is centered at 11 GHz. Now, if I change the output frequency from my 8620, you will see the spectrum on the spectral analyzer moves across the range here. And this setup is useful for intermodulation testing. And that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up, and also remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.